Springs Baptist Church this morning. If you'll take the All American hymnal, turn to number 146. It is well with my soul. If you know Jesus Christ, it's well with your soul. Right. Amen. You know him as your Savior. If you don't, it ain't well with your soul. It'll be a good morning to get that took care of. Amen. When
Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me.
Telestai. It is finished. <laughs> yes, Amen. Sir. Mm. What's finished? Yeah. He paid the price. Paid. The price is paid. Amen. Yes, sir. I believe the book of Hebrews tells us he endured the shame of the cross for the joy that was yes. before it. Joy? What joy? The joy that fellowship was restored yeah. with God like it was in the Garden of Eden. We can talk to God to God because of what Jesus Christ did. We now have an opportunity to get eternal life, to be saved, to restore that fellowship with God the Father. Yes, amen. amen. Don't, don't put it off. Amen. Don't put it off. Be saved today if you're not. All right, well, we'll sing one more song. About three on nine. Three on nine. Three on nine. Amen. Let's do three on nine. Man of sorrows, what a name.
dig up old yeah. Muhammad and all the rest of that outfit you want yeah. to dig up, there'll be some bones there. Yeah. Yeah. But you ain't going to find the bones of nope. Jesus because he's there he risen. Is. Amen.
saved if you cared enough. For an old lost sinner. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Saved by that precious grace. Yes. Business 2, 8, and 9. For by grace are you saved. Yes. Through faith. You didn't get it. You couldn't earn it. You no, can't buy right. it. Amen. It's only by his precious blood that yes. we have it. Amen. He shed that day on Calvary. Amen. Not drops. It flowed. Down that old cross to the ground. But he did that for us. Upon the rugged cross of Calvary was where
after the likes of me. Yes, amen. Mm. I know me pretty good. I guarantee you, I wasn't worth dying for. <laughs> but he thought so. Yes, amen. Glory yes, to amen. God. He, oh, what a savior. Amen. What a savior. Glory to God.
life. I promise. Just ain't looking in the right places. Uh, I got to be careful when Gilbert says, can I say something? Guess what I'm preaching on. <laughs> Luke chapter somewhere. Uh, I don't even know what the verse is. 24-5. Yes. And really, I'm not going to preach long. And don't, you, know, you don't have to laugh at that. I'm really am not. Uh, I'd aim for this all be a singing, but if I don't preach, this young man over here is going to whoop me. <laughs> and uh, he likes the preaching of God's Word. Amen. And if I don't preach it, he'll come up here and he'll whoop. He says, whoops. Put that finger on that book. But this is one of my favorite verses of all the questions that have ever been asked concerning the resurrection, this has got to be the most unique. I mean, here, here the, these people are coming to anoint a dead body. Yeah. They believe that's what they're, they're coming to do. They've purchased the spices, they've prepared those spices, and now they're coming to the last place that they've seen Jesus there in that tomb to anoint that body for him to lay there and go through corruption and rot in that tomb. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. Rolled away. Rolled. Yeah, it burned in my heart. Rolled away. Amen. And they entered in, and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can go to any other grave, any other religious leader in the world today and dig his bones up. But you ain't going to dig up Jesus. Hey. A fellow, one of these <coughs> high uh, he's a YouTuber, I can't think of his name right now, I guess that's probably because Lord don't want me to name him, but he was, he was interviewing a Christian and he asked this Christian, he says, well, why do, you, why do you believe? Why do you believe in Jesus? He said, well, because of my faith. I, I, I just wanted to kind of reach up here and tap on too. And put it, I said, put a comma by there in the empty grave. <laughs> the empty grave is God's stamp that everything that Jesus said, done, and is going to do is absolutely true. Amen. That the price, when he cried from the cross, it is finished. Mm -hmm. you, you can't lift your finger. You can't, you can't wave one little hair follicle around to earn your salvation. But Jesus paid it all. Yes. Amen. And it doesn't matter how deep in the sin your life is. God's able to bring you up out of that. And like that last song, that the song for the last, I've been changed. Thank God I'm not what I used to be. Amen. I may have a long way to go down the road, but I, there's something took place in my life that changed me. Mm -hmm. The old black preacher said, if you is what you was, you ain't. Amen. God changed. How can, you get, how can you get the living God of heaven living inside of you and not be changed? Right. To not feel His presence to feel His love, to feel His joy, so, so that you would go to this world and empty the world's pleasures into this body instead of allowing the pleasures of God to overflow you. Man, they went there with droopy lips and sad hearts and their counts. I mean, they were dragging low when they come to that place. But to confine Jesus, now the next verse. And they were afraid. No, there was, they were most perplexed there about. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Amen. 
I'm going to preach just a few minutes on why seek ye to live in amongst the dead. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity we had to come together to worship you this morning, lift our hearts to praise you for all that you've done for us, Lord. We're so grateful. So grateful for the power of the resurrection and the life that's in Christ. Father, we're grateful for your love and your mercy. We're grateful for the changed lives that you're able to bring about. We rejoice in you today, Father. Rejoice in the risen Christ. Rejoice in the life that you've given us to live for you. Father, now I pray that others would be turned from the emptiness of religion, Father, to that true and living relationship, the Father, with you. I pray today that you would accomplish your will out of your word in the lives and the hearts of your people. I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Why seek ye the living amongst the dead? People come to churches every Sunday. That means churches, they, they come and they, they sit and they sing songs. And they get up and their life's never been affected and never been changed. They, they've never known what it was to experience the love of Christ in their life. The deadness of religion. They, people come and they, they, they how did, you, remember, you remember what happened in the Garden of Eden? There was, there was Adam and Eve and they went and they sinned against God. Broke that pure holy relationship. And the first thing they did would cover themselves up with leaves. Fig leaf religion. That was their works. That was their means of covering up their sin. And so we try to assuage our minds, our hearts, our conscience from our sin against God. And, and, and in doing so, we know, we know there's something out there. Something's working somewhere. But we're not going to come to Him. We're going to try to find Him someplace else. We're going to look at an empty tomb. We're going to, we're going to come to a place where there's death. We're going to come to a place where there's not any life. And if you drown yourself in that religion of this world without having a pure relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, to know that He's able to transform your life, to make a new creature out of you. And I get to thinking about my life before I knew Christ, and I, I cringe sometimes. I, I think of I think, Lord, how could I, how could you love me? Yeah. And He took it and wiped that slate clean with the blood of Christ. Why seek ye the living amongst the dead? That dead self-work, self-righteousness. Where we, we justify ourselves instead of being justified by the blood of Christ. We want to say, well, I'm not so bad. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm not a murderer. I'm not a, maybe not a thief. Although if we want to run the Ten Commandments by us, we'll find that we broke all of them somewhere along the line. There ought to be within our minds, there ought to be that, that pricking of our conscience that we have sinned against the Holy God and there's no remedy for that sin except for the blood of Jesus. Amen. Why seek ye the living amongst the dead? Isn't that a great question? Today, God asks you that question. Why do you seek the living amongst the dead? Have you found the living Christ? Have you been in that room all alone and wondering and listening to tales about other people having seen and experienced the resurrection? You know, we know his body's gone and there in that, that room where your, all of your doubts and all of your fears are, Jesus knocks on that door, steps inside through the walls. Amen? Right there in the middle of the room with all of the disciples present. He said, here I am. Amen. The scripture says, if you seek me with your whole heart, you'll find me. Yes. He's not hiding somewhere. Right. He's not poked away in a hole. He's not buried in a tomb. The word of faith is near you. It's, it's there on the end of your tongue. And if you cry out to a holy God that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. To know what it is to have the God of creation who spoke the stars into existence set this planet spinning where it is and one of these days is going to burn this thing up like a marshmallow over a campfire. Yeah. 
But he's promised in between to take those that have been born by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. Born by his precious blood into eternity with him. Why seek ye the living amongst the dead? You seeking him through work, self-righteousness? You seeking him through religion? You seeking him... How are you seeking Christ? Are you seeking him with your whole heart? If he said, Lord, I don't care anything else about the rest of the world. I don't want that junk in my life. I don't want that part of it in my life. I want to be filled with you. Because if he, your life isn't filled with him, you're nothing more than an empty tomb. You're just, a, you're just a dead place waiting to go to a dead spot on this earth. But Christ came to redeem us. Yes, he did. Amen. That verse over in Hebrews, Brother Butch was talking about this morning, he entered into once that holy place, once for all. Amen. You'll never ever stand before a holy God and say, I didn't have a chance. No. You'll never once stand before a holy God and say, I didn't hear You'll never be able to stand before a holy God and say, you know what, I, I, if I've just seen Jesus, if I've just you know, been there during that time, if, if you've just done a miracle, if you've done a dog and pony show for me, I would believe. God said, look on that empty tomb, seek the living, the one who walked out of that place of death, the one who conquered not just sin, but death for you. Yes, that's right. Amen. As a Christian, you never have, I don't know, I've lost track. I'd have to take my shoes off and start counting the number of times I've stood at death's door. But I, I don't have to count how many times I stood there afraid. I never feared death. Amen. And you can't do that unless there's somebody inside of you that's alive and living. Amen. That's taken away that fear and replaced it with his love and his joy. Why see ye? The living amongst the dead. Oh, what a waste of time. What a waste of time. Yeah. People, man, it, it's amazing how people can waste their time. You know, they, they'll go here, there, and yonder, do this, that, and whatever, and wherever, and however they want to, and they'll spend bucks, and I mean, they just, they pour their lives into it. But God just says, I want you to come to the one who's alive. I want you to come to the living one. If you're going to seek Christ, you can't, you're not going to do it in an empty tomb. You're not going to do it in a graveyard. You're going to, you're going to have to come to Christ. The one who's able to transform and change. We sang that song, uh, And Can It Be? It talks about that full atonement. Yeah. Full atonement. I'm never going to atone for, not for not for one iota sin I ever committed. Because Jesus' blood is my atonement. The living Christ, the living Christ becomes your righteousness. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.21, He made Him who knew no sin to be sin for you, that you might be made the righteousness of God. Amen. You know, for you to go to heaven, you've got to be as righteous as God. Yeah. Yeah. That ought to scare you to death. Yeah. But because he was made sin for you, he robed you in that white linen, pure, white, holy linen which is the righteousness of the saints. He takes the righteousness of God and places it on you. That's the gift of the living, not of the dead. Why seek ye the living amongst the dead? The deadness of whatever your life is seeking after. Whatever it is that you're trying to find some, something to form or to make your life around. Trying to build your life around it. Trying to Cling to it and grab some hope out of it. Trying to find some way to get your fingernails hooked in so you don't slide off into eternity without any hope. Where's that dead place in your life? 
I want to tell you, you can come to the living Savior today yes. and know what it is to have eternal hope. Yes. Saved. Saved. Yes. Saved. By Him who conquered sin and death. Why seek ye the living? Looking in all the wrong places. Why? Well, you, you're looking in places that have no hope for you. But in Christ there's eternal hope. We sing that song, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. I got news for you. Because He Lives, I Can Face Eternity. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> no fear of what lies around out there. This world's going to go up. It's fallen to the hands of the Antichrist. You don't, you don't even have to be much of a Bible scholar to look around at you and see what's going on, the direction the world's going, the direction the world's taking. It's all there in the book. Yes. But as I read in that, I see him who's alive, sitting up on his throne, waiting for that day when the Father says, go get your bride. He descends from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel, the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up in the air to meet him. Amen. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, or 1 Corinthians 15, so we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Amen. In a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, the speed of light. That little twinkle that goes on in people's eyes like, that fast. We're out of here. And you don't have time to hang around empty tombs. <laughs> if you keep looking in places of death, you'll never find he who is alive yes. and is coming again for you. Sure. Why seek ye the living amongst the dead? Let's pray. Father, I pray today for those that are here. I pray, God, that your spirit will move upon their hearts and their lives. And Father, I pray for being one here today that does not know you. Father, who's been looking for you in those places of death instead of life, that, Lord, you would touch their hearts. Father, that they bow the knee today before you and confess that Jesus is their only hope of salvation. That, Father, they place their total trust in the shed blood and in the power of the conquering grave. Father, that the, the resurrection might be known and felt in their lives. Father, that they might know what it is to be made new, to be made alive, to be made a new creature in Christ. That the old things, Father, would pass away and behold, all things would become new. I pray today, God, that they would find the living Christ. In the midst of their closed doors, in the midst of their emptiness, that they'd be filled with you and your love and your joy and your peace. And I pray, Father, this in Jesus' holy name and for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. How about you? Do you know Christ? Do you know the living, resurrected Christ in your life? Do you know that uh, love of a living Savior in your life? Do you know the change that God brings upon a person's life? Well, today you can know that. Yes. If you'll come to Christ, give Him your heart and your soul. He'll save you today. I'm so grateful. It's a still a whosoever, whosoever gospel. Yes. And He doesn't pick and choose. But if you'll come to Him, if you'll seek Him with all your heart, You'll know what it is to find the living, resurrected Christ. Ready, won't you come? We'll sing a song. We're going to sing one verse. One verse, God speak to your heart. That's what these old pews up here are for. You need to come and hit one. Get life right with God. I'm not, I'm not uh, one of them that's going to try to lead you in a prayer. 
I'm telling you, if you want to come get right with God, you'll know exactly what you need to do. Yes. You know you need to repent of your sins and receive the only hope of your salvation, which is the shed blood of Jesus. You come and do that day, God will save your soul. Yes, he will. The living, resurrected Christ will move in. Mm -hmm. Will move in. Did you know him? 366. We're going to sing one verse right here. One verse. God's speaking to your heart. You need to come. Let's stand as we sing. Give you a chance to stretch your legs if you're able to. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Are you there? Do you know Him? Do you know the living Christ? Are you still seeking living amongst the dead? Amen. 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 Amen.